Hello everyone, today I want to show you my almost two years old battery based off grid solar system. When I first started out, I have a total of four 320 watt solar panel added to the side of my house, which give me about 1300 watts total. This was strictly used to power my electric water heaters, and this was going from directly from the solar panels into my water heater. You can check out my previous video if you want to see that video. Later on, I added a total of 20 280 watts solar panel giving me another extra 5.6 kilowatt of power. Today I will be doing an overview of my entire system. The solar to water heater directly system works so well that in the summertime I overproduce by 9 to 10 a.m. in the morning the system has already get to full temperature so the system would just shut off and the solar is just going to waste. That's the reason why I decided to combine my system because in, during the summertime my central air conditioner requires a lot of power so in the summertime I can definitely use the extra power. At the very end of the video I will also be showing you all my bill and how much this system has saved me over the past two years. Here's the power room. This is where everything, all the wire and everything get connected and where everything get distributed. Uh, let's go over all of the major components. Um, so from the top here, we'll start with this one. This is a uh, pure sine wave uh, reliable electric inverter. And this is actually a 60 volt, rated 60 volt inverter, uh, 3,500 watts. The main inverters, uh, these are the uh, MPP 5048 MG. Uh, these two inverters are a little bit uh, special because they are uh, strictly 240 volts uh, AC outputs. But the special thing about these two are that they are rated to take in uh, up to uh, 500 volts DC solar. It's in high voltage solar. We put out 240 volt single phase. These are not split phase, so you could only use this as 240 uh, single phase output. The main big array that you see uh, 10 panels will go into this inverter and then the other 10 panel will go into uh, this uh, second inverter here. The Midnight Classic is only responsible for taking power from four of the panel that's on the side. And here is the solar disconnect. All of the solar array comes into this little Midnight um, solar disconnect. From the solar panels, uh, go, and, go and it will get feed into this two inverter. It get The other line get feed into the Midnight Classic. And then all of the inverter connection, the inverter outputs, it will go into this uh, midnight distribution box. Okay, let me go over all of the components for this power distribution box. So I have three sets of circuit breakers here. Okay, and this is the bypass uh, breaker for the AC side. And this is the AC in circuit breaker. This is the grid and circuit breakers, pretty much. And then I have this um, DC disconnect for the uh, inverter and charge controller um, circuit breakers. And here is the battery disconnect. And this is the uh, Midnight Classic uh, with Bang Jr. And what this does is that it just measures the uh, amperage, you know, what's going into the battery, what's going out of the battery. And just in case what you were wondering what this little box is, so this is just a wireless uh, Wi-Fi bridge that I have to buy in order to use the Midnight Classic uh, uh, monitoring system. So I have a Wispang Junior install with the Midnight Classic to monitor uh, this over the internet. This is all the wire coming from the power distribution box. Get routed, go into the battery box. And on the side of my battery box, I have built this little uh, disconnects box. And this is the uh, master manual disconnect switch out of, out, of, out of a Nissan Leaf battery. I also have a little uh, battery meter right here. This can give me roughly the state of charge. Right now it's at 59% or it can give me voltage, 60.8 volts right now. Okay, there is inside the battery disconnect box. I have uh, three sets of battery. 
So that's why each one of them is going through a 200 amps fuse. And these are our salvage parts out of the, um, the electric vehicle. So I have three sets of fuse. This is the negative side. Everything get um, grounded and go together. And then the positive side is the one that will go to the fuse and then all get tied up together up here. And then go into the, uh, go into the master manual switch, disconnect switch. Here's my battery box. Currently it's sitting in a 48 by 40 by 18 inch flammable metal cabinets. This is my lithium battery bank. 12 Chevy Volt Gen 2 16 cells modules. Each module rated 58 volt nominal fully charged to about 65.5 volt if you charge them to 4.1 volt per cell. But with my charge controller I can only max out at 64 volt therefore I only charge the battery to 4 volt per cell which is perfectly fine because that will extend the life of these batteries. Each module are 3.1 kilowatts hour giving me a total of 37.2 kilowatts hour battery storage. So let's talk about the saving but first I want to address that I think um, many of us already understand that a off-grid system will actually probably most likely will never pay itself off or will never pay itself up in time to make it worth it. Um, I already knew about this uh, before I installed uh, all of this off-grid system. Um, but anyway, I still want to go over the numbers. If you take a look to the right, where it says solar install costs, uh, 24 the use panel, and then the labors to install the panels, the inverter, the charge controller, the wires, I installed them myself. Um, so there is uh, no labor cost in those, but I did have uh, someone o came over to install the solar panel onto the roof itself. All of that total costs, and then the battery costs and the miscellaneous stuff. Uh, my system, I would say roughly, is about costs about fourteen thousand dollars, which I think it's very cheap for the size of the system and for a battery-based system, especially a lithium battery-based uh, system. Um, it is still 14,000 sound like it's a lot but in an off-grid solar system currently that I, I believe that number is still very cheap compared to other system so I install I installed my system around the end of May 2018 so if you look to, to the left I have my electric bill um, starting from 2017 so for the whole year of 2017 my electric bill uh, is around thirteen hundred dollars which is still very cheap is because I'm very conservative um, on how I use my power I'm always trying to be very conservative and during the summertime here in Arizona that can get very hot um, I still only set my um, my temperatures uh, for my air conditioner around 81 or 82 even 82 degrees um, anything lower than that then you're gonna start paying an arms and a legs for your electric bill. Uh, 81, 82 is not a very comfortable number. You want to be at about 78, 77, 78 is the comfortable number. But most of us here in Arizona, if we want to be conservative and using power, we have to set our thermostat as about 81. We're looking into the second portion of the uh, 2018, uh, let's say June 2018. If you compare June 2018 uh, which is my bill is $137 if you look at June 2017 you see it's $194 so there is a pretty big difference there and if you keep going you see it started dropping 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 all the way down to winter still drop you know drop anything from 50 to 60 dollars during the summers and then another 10 to 15 dollars during the winter times so that whole year it dropped at about two hundred dollars but that's because that's only about half of the year okay so now start looking into 2019 uh, you see there's another big difference so now the difference is about you know five hundred uh, five hundred fifty dollars per year uh, which still doesn't seem like much I got rid of my natural gas so my house have natural gas for the water heaters so and then for the uh, central heater as well so finally I got rid of the gas because if you know for the gas it's natural gas is very cheap but here they still charge you a service fee 
so even though you only might use like ten dollars of gas but they still charge you a twenty dollar flat rate service fee and I don't know how much it has gone up ever since but before it was minimum thirty dollar a month even if you don't use any gas okay and then I just give it an average of let's say forty five dollars a month but normally it's a lot more than that in the winter time we can go up to like you know seventy eighty dollars sometime even a hundred dollars if we use a lot of uh, hot waters and, and uh, heating um, so I just estimate it to be a saving of about five hundred fifty six hundred dollars a year but uh, I think realistically it's a lot more than that all these numbers I've, I'm also very conservative with all this uh, estimate the saving from the grid is another about five hundred to six hundred dollars a year now this does not account for my mini split air conditioner which I added in my garage so I work in my garage a lot now taking batteries apart and stuff like that so in the summer times I run my, that air conditioner 12,000 BTU I would say from I would say 8 a.m. in the morning all the way to 4 p.m. so that's eight nine hours constantly a day and it runs non-stop now in the winter times now I actually use the heat pumps on it too because a lot of time it gets too cold in the morning and I run it for a few hours so I give that a total of you know let's just say a rough estimate of an extra of 1200 to 1300 uh, watt, uh, kilowatts and so here it's 13 cents a kilowatt so I would add another extra cost of maybe 140 to 150 dollar a year ever since we have solar I'm starting to to be less conservative and I use a lot of more stuff like the electric to heat my pond in my backyard if we were to do the same thing when we still had the without solar it will be a significant add-on to the to my electric bill most of the neighbors that's around me here their bill is probably 25 to 30 percent higher than my bill so all of the rough number I would say my saving you know per year ever since having solar is probably maybe a thousand to fifteen hundred a year which is not much so it's gonna take me a while at least I would say ten years uh, eight to ten years to to offset the cost it's not it's not just about the saving or you know when you're gonna offset that cost because it's gonna be a very long time even for a grid tie system you're looking at a lot longer than ten years to get to offset your cost but what about the comfort values what about the uh, when it when when the power goes out and I still have electric so it's hard to values that kind of um, you know that kind of I don't know how to calculate those value uh, obviously uh, it's just gonna be uh, depend on you how important is it for you uh, when the power go out and you still have power you know some for some people that's kind of priceless which already happened a few times actually more than a few times ever since for the last two years I think my power has from the grid dropped out like five times five to six times because of all the monsoons and all the rains that we have here recently for the past year uh, so the power has went out you know multiple times and every single time it's at least a few hours and I still have power you know I can still work in my garage so I think that's kinda of priceless um, the comfort level uh, for the last year and a half, uh, two years that we have the solar, I'm now able to run air conditioners in my house, and I'm able to leave a run at 77 degrees. Now that's a that's a huge, huge improvement. Um, so anyway, guys, I hope this video um, helped out some of you. Anyway, guys, thanks for watching, and if you please like the video, thumbs up, and please subscribe to my channel.